Bellator MMA returns to San Jose when undefeated featherweight world champion AJ McKee faces former three-time champ Patricio Pitbull in an immediate must-see rematch. Don't miss it Friday, April 15th at the SAP Center. 作为父母，我哋尽己所能喺呢场疫情中保证孩子们嘅安全。依家我哋有咗确保佢哋更安全嘅最佳工具。我哋所能够做最为重要嘅嘢，就系为孩子接种疫苗嚟预防 COVID-19。疫苗已经被证明咗对满五周岁嘅孩子系安全有效嘅。联系你孩子嘅医生或访问 m y t u n c a g o v 嚟寻找你附近嘅疫苗。由 The California Department of Public Health 为你提供。This is Donald Parham of the LA Chargers, and you're listening to Chargers Unleashed, part of the LA Football Network. Stay diggy. You have to be really intentional about, about putting a team together. I was in. Crawl out of the pond and start screaming. How good is Joey Bosa? Herbert rolling, looking, throwing, end zone, touchdown, intercepted. Derwin James. Derwin was there. With- you got to be on a mission every day in the NFL. But even more than that, you got to be on a mission together. Great hands, Keenan Allen. The Los Angeles Chargers select Rashawn Slater, Asante Samuel Jr. That was that. Oh, I'm stepping y'all, boy. That's gonna be intercepted, picked off by Michael Davis. Explosion, explosiveness from Eckler. There's Murphy, boy, he put that up. It is picked off. Nasir Adderley. Fifty-fifty ball is a hundred percent. Mike Williams. Is- Welcome to another episode of Chargers Unleashed. Jake Hefner and Dan Wolkenstein here with you from the LA Football Network. You can, of course, find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at LAC underscore Unleashed on YouTube and wherever you find your podcast. This episode today is being brought to you by Brewery X, UFC Fit and Temec. Charger Bolt family and Manscaped. Make sure to use the promo code LAFB20 and get tw- uh, get free shipping off of Manscaped.com. <laughs> if this is your first time tuning in, welcome and thank you for checking us out. Super excited today. Dan, as of today, we are officially 10 days away from the week one matchup. Chargers against the Washington football team. And what better way 10 days out to put us in the mood with a special guest <laughs> As always, I leave the floor to you, sir. Do the honors. Yes, we have a special guest in the house today from Mesa, Arizona, fellow Jack Rabbit and Utah State Aggie. He has dabbled a bit in basketball and volleyball before committing to football, where he became the first football player in Utah State history to earn freshman All-American. In 2018, he had two separate three-sack games against Josh Allen and Russell Wilson to finish the season with 10 and a half sacks. He is now reunited with Corey Lindsley and Brian Bulaga here in L.A., wearing the number 51, rushing the quarterback on Sundays. Kyler Fackrell has been flashing all over preseason, balling out on defense and special teams, and is now kind enough to take a few minutes to join us on Chargers Unleashed. Kyler, thank you so much for joining us on the show. How are you? How's the family? Hey, thanks for having me. I am great. The family's great. The weather's great. The beach is great. <laughs> we're, we're happy to be here in Southern California. Yes, the, the weather is great. The fact that you're able to be in Southern California, we were talking about offline. The fact that you're still able to wear the beard with it being this warm, uh, I'm impressed. I give you kudos, my friend. I appreciate that. <laughs> Getting a little hot, uh, but I think we'll keep it for a little bit longer. Yes. <laughs> Who has the best beard on the team before we get started? Who would you say has the best beard? Uh, I. It always looks the best on the big guys, I think. So, I mean, it's got to be between <laughs> Filer and, and, and Lynn Ball. I think Linval got got the best beard, even though it's always hidden behind that mask. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? So look, I know you just got out of practice. Uh, how was practice today? Anything stand out to you? It was great. No, it was just it was good work going into a little bit of a longer weekend, thankfully. So uh, yeah, it was. I mean, we went hard, padded practice. So um, yeah, just kind of trying to get the win, get get everything ready for for the real thing. 
Love it. Love it. All right. So we're going to talk about all kinds of things. We'll go into week one against Washington football team. We'll talk about training camp, learn a little bit about you and this defense, Justin Herbert, go into a little bit more of you off the field, maybe what motivates you, maybe get to some rapid fire questions, get you know a little bit better. But let's just start with kind of your decision to join this team in LA. You've played with some pretty impressive defensive players in your six years in the NFL. What was it about the Chargers team and this defense that was so intriguing for you to sign with this team this offseason? Yeah, it was. I mean, I think a lot of it, honestly, was I had a great conversation with Coach Staley. And, uh, you know, he knows me a little bit from having coached in Chicago and, and I was in Green Bay. Um, so he knows of me from from kind of that connection and uh, and just kind of hearing him talk about the scheme and the defense. Um, I think we both kind of felt like it would be a really great fit. Um, and other than that, we I mean, as far as location wise, we I'm a West Coast guy. My wife is a is a West Coast uh, girl. So we're uh, excited to be back in the West for sure. Speaking of Coach Staley, Carl, Coach Staley and Coach Hill have both publicly praised not only your consistent your consistency, but as well as your versatility. And, you know, what have they what have they told you since you got there? And obviously, as you're, you're you know, gone through practice and training camp and now you've seen just more of your uh, role on defense be more solidified. But what have they told you just as far as about uh, what they want from you defensively and also on special teams? Because we know you have that attribute to your you know, resume as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, I hope to be able to contribute. And I think their expectation is for me to be, um, I guess, kind of a rotation third, third, uh, like rotational player defensively. Um, and, and to start on, I mean, probably as many special teams as, as I can, um, you know, and contribute in that way as well, I guess, it hasn't been super spelled out. We're still, I mean, we're really kind of just closing camp. And, and I think the focus has been more on and just kind of individual improvement and kind of, you know, working to get better. Um, but I, I think that conversation is coming as far as moving into the season, what, um, what the roles are going to be at this point. And we've had your teammate Drew Tranquil on with us previously and, and, um, you know, we talked about the mentality required to excel on special teams and how important that phase of this game is, especially with what we've heard Coach Staley talk about recently. And I'm sure you've heard about the struggles with this team that it's had historically when it comes to special teams in the past. But what specifically do you think that the team needs to change or to do right now um, when 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 that shit, you know, when when the regular season comes as far as the special teams go? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely there are a lot of coaches, teams that um, I think that kind of special teams is just is like a second tier thing, you know, it's kind of an afterthought. And that hasn't been the case here. And I think that's kind of the first step is that, you know, from the top down the head, head man all the way down to, you know, to the players um, that, that, that they take it seriously, that it, it's something that's very important. We know, um, you know, the talent and the ability that we have offensively and defensively. And, uh, you know, special teams needs to be something that can propel us to to wins and not something that holds us back for sure. Right. And we've heard all about the, the practice reps, really. Let's talk about like some of these practice reps because we've heard about them all in practice. And uh, we heard about the early days of training camp when the entire edge rush group got their individual chance to go up against first round selection, Rashawn Slater. What has it been to go up against him consistently and practice on a weekly basis? It's been, it's honest, honestly been impressive. You know, he, he has done unbelievably well. Um, you know, I think I, I like to think that we have some pretty good edge rushers in our uh, <laughs> edge group and, uh, and I think he's done really well. Um, he has great feet technique wise. It's, it's hard to kind of get him panicking and running one way or the other. You know, he's he's very solid. He has a good anchor when you try to power him. So uh, I think big things are ahead for Rashawn. Now, we're talking to Kyler Fackrell, your outside edge player for the Los Angeles Chargers. Kyler, we, we've heard several players and coaches kind of talk to this team about the excitement in the locker room. And if we're being honest, like a lot of guys in the locker room seem to be super motivated and look to kind of have like this chip on their shoulder with something to prove. I think you've talked about that a little bit too. Yeah. Like wh where do you think that mentality and motivation comes from? 
Uh, I mean, I don't know. This is, this is, you know, my third month or whatever it is with, uh, <laughs> with the team. But, um, you know, I think there's a little bit of a chip on the shoulder just from being the, uh, you know, the LA team, kind of the second LA team, or at least that's the way it seems as far as like the fan base a little bit, like we, we haven't quite gotten integrated with, with the city. Um, and I, again, I think what's going to change that is winning for sure. And, uh, you know, other than that, I think there's just, I think they've had a lot of talent here, um, for, for a long time and just haven't really been, been able to kind of get over that hump and to get deep, like make deep runs in, into the playoffs. Um, so I think that's, that's kind of where the chip comes from is, is, you know, we know we should have been good um, and we should be good. And, uh, you know, for, I mean, I know there's been injuries and it just hasn't really panned out in the last couple of years. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think this year is obviously, I think everyone has that feeling and that, intention that this year is going to be that year interesting interesting you you hear a lot of talk from the coaching staff about like team identity and, and people have like tipping on the shoulder and doing it their way your way um with you joey bosa nuosu chris rump you know you got your coaches jay rogers gift smith coaching on the defensive line outside linebackers like how would you define the makeup and identity of the edge group specifically I think I think we have a lot of of talent on the edge, and I think we can make a lot of things happen. And I think a great thing about again about uh, just the mentality of Coach Staley and and Giff and, and Jay is that they're going to let us be free. You know, we we still are learning each other as far as being able to play off each other naturally while rushing with you know certain inside guys. But I think they they really have set it up to where we can go inside or outside. And then there are certain, there are kind of specified times when the inside guy can go inside or outside and we're playing off of them. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's going to be, it's going to be really organized and guys are going to have a clear idea of, of what they can do as far as where they can take their moves and pass rush lanes. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun once we kind of get a good feel for each other and, and the bullets start flying. Now, folks who have seen highlights or have seen you back when you were with with the Packers or with the Giants, you know, we've seen like the ten and a half sack year. We, we've seen a lot of like the hustle, instinctive plays. You kind of seem to have a very heady way of going about doing things. What do you think? Like, what should fans expect from you this season on defense, specific? Like from you, and like, have you heard anything from the coaching staff? Like, are you starting? I know you mentioned you're kind of going to be in rotation. Is there going to be like a defined? Number two behind Joey Bosa, like what's that whole situation going to be like for you guys? Uh, as far as starting and stuff, I don't know. You know, that's still kind of, I guess that's a question for the coaches. I'm I, that hasn't been declared. I, I'm not sure at this point. But uh, as far as um, you know, what to expect from me, I think this has been my best training camp um, since I've been in the league, and I feel like I've um, just as far as the the personal improvement that I've made. Um, so I, I feel confident. I feel great going into the season and, you know, I hope to be a playmaker on the edge. So Kyler, most who follow the team and your background know your, your college history at Utah state. And then of course with the Packers and the giants, but there is not much out there, not many people out there that know much about you off the field. I know you had mentioned obviously that, you know, you're a West coast guy at heart. Um, you know, bring us into, bring us into your home, bring us into the day in the life of Kyler Fackrell. Uh, outside of football, what makes Kyler Fackrell tick? Fill us in on some of your your passions, um, priorities off the field, if you will. Yeah, I'm I'm full on into the dad life. I have a beautiful <laughs> beautiful wife, Liz, and we have uh, three beautiful children: uh, two girls and then a boy, Delaney, Lucy, and Benjamin. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, as you can imagine, that's that takes up the majority of the time. Those, those kids, uh, any, any off time that I have, uh, it's usually spent with, with my wife and kids. That's great. That's great. Now you yeah. got the distinct player to play with one of the best quarterbacks in the league over in green Bay with Aaron Rodgers. Justin Herbert has all the tools in and out of the huddle to be special. Yeah. How would you compare what you've seen from Justin early in his career 
compare that with what you got a chance to see with Aaron during your time in Green Bay. Yeah, I mean, like you said, there's no doubt that he has all the uh, the ability, and I think really he has the kind of the intangibles um, that a quarterback needs. You know, I haven't been around him for super long, but he is he's a quiet guy, so he's not necessarily going to you know, be screaming and yelling on the sideline, which personally I like, but, um, you know, I know that Peyton Manning, you know, some of the other great quarterbacks have, you know, they can get heated and animated and stuff like that. But, uh, no, I think Justin, the throws, the plays that he can make with his legs, um, you know, he's, he's a unique talent. And I think he's been, um, he's been great in the locker room. You know, I, I know that he commands a lot of respect from, from all of us, his teammates in the locker room. Um, so I'm super excited to see what he does on the field this year. Nice. Now, finally, we're 10 days away, September 12th, week one against the Washington football teams coming up. How much have you and the team started to prepare for that matchup? I know, obviously, just, you know, normally we'd be talking about week four of the preseason, but this, you know, circumstances have obviously changed in the last year. But right. what do you see as the keys of being able to come away with a victory in week one? We haven't, it's been more about us, honestly, even up to today's practice. Um, we haven't really looked too much at Washington at this point. It's been about kind of finishing off camp right and getting ourselves right um, to begin with. So I, I, I don't know too much about Washington. Um, you know, I know, I think uh, Fitzpatrick is going to start. I'm not even, I'm not totally sure on that, but uh, you know, obviously he's a vet guy. Um, He's got a lot of experience and he's shown really uh, impressive streaks for sure. So uh, I think he'll, uh, I mean, it'll, it'll be a challenge. They have a lot of talent defensively. They have a, a very good front, um, you know, good defense and they have a lot of speed on, on the edge offensively, a lot of weapons. So um, again, it'll be a great challenge, but um, I don't know too much specifically at this point, but I think uh, we definitely are, are confident in you know as long as we prepare the right way i'm, I'm sure short. i don't have to i'm sure i don't have to tell you this but go ahead jake you go first because I, I was just gonna say so basically in <laughs> short whoever's wearing the quarterback jersey your goal is just to put them on the ground <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that was it <laughs> always always yes. and i was gonna say so jake and i we've done a few years of looking at like draft prospects and things um that number 24 antonio gibson that guy is a playmaker on Washington, please don't let him score against us because I'll never hear the end of it. So just keep an eye on him. <laughs> Do me a favor, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, we. I'm sure we'll we'll have to we'll have some special things uh, you know, designed designed to stop him. He's he's definitely uh, a force to be reckoned with. Yep, yep. All right, we're racking up with Kyler Fackrell on your Los Angeles Chargers. All right, so you've asked me some football questions. Now let's get to know you a little bit. Are you open for a few rapid fire questions to end this thing out? Let's do it. All right. Here we go. Uh, Kyler Fackrell and Rapid Fire. Number one, best meal you've had since you've been here in L.A. Um, I'm going to have to say uh, we went and got some, uh, some steaks from the butchery. And uh, my wife, it was actually when I got home from, uh, from a game. They had uh, like a nice Wagyu steak cooked on the grill. And uh, yeah, I know, a homemade meal. And uh, I think that's that's the best one since I've been here. I yes. literally was just, I was just talking to my wife. She asked me, like, what's one food you haven't had before that you would always love to try? And I said, like, Wagyu steak. I literally talked about this like four hours ago. That is weird. Mm. Yep. Um, I would recommend right. it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> uh, funniest teammate since joining the Chargers team. Who's your funniest teammate? Funniest teammate. I think I think I'm gonna say Joey. Joey, he's a little bit. It's like sarcastic, kind of dry humor, but that's kind of my style of humor. So Joey is hilarious to me. Are there any Joey isms that stand out to you? Um, <laughs> I, I not any like sayings or anything, but just dry sarcasm just kind of across the board <laughs> is not a vibe that I get from Joey. Now, now you, you, you've played a bunch of positions and you've played throughout high school, college, 
and obviously in the pros now. Throughout your career, what is your favorite play of your career? Could be any level. Favorite play of yours so far? Ooh, that's a tough one. I I'm, I would probably have to say um, I had a pick six last year with the Giants. The stiff arm? Yeah. <laughs> I think. <laughs> that, I mean, that's the first time I've I've touched the ball and ran with the ball since almost high school, I feel like. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Kyler, this will be an interesting question. This, will be, this is the first time we've ever actually asked this question on this show, so I'm excited to hear this. Okay. Biggest irrational fear that you have? Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's irrational, but I would say snakes. But maybe it's – I mean, most people probably don't like snakes, but I – really don't like I'm with you. like absolutely just watching seeing a picture or watching a video of a snake like almost makes me want to throw it so you, so you walk away in like indiana jones whenever snakes hit the screen pretty much then pretty much yeah i <laughs> I, I get very uncomfortable okay, awesome well i'll get away from the fears now i'll go over to something a little bit more goofy if the los angeles chargers were a box of cereal what cereal would we call them? Oh, uh, let's see. I'm going to say Lucky Charms. Ooh. Like it. Especially for this year. I like that answer. <laughs> yes, yes, please. I, I was going to say tricks if you had no answer because I was like legitimately <laughs> thinking, man, I feel like this team has, especially defense, has so many tricks up its sleeve. But. Yeah. Lucky Charms, I'll take that all day. <laughs> all right, it's game day. Heads in the locker room, hour before kickoff, getting your mind right. You got the headphones on. What's on Kyler Packerel's playlist on game day? Uh, it's a little bit of – it's kind of a mix of some rap and hard rock. It's like just specific songs, but uh, – I don't know. There's some. There's some Kanye West, some Jay Z. There's some uh, Rage Against the Machine. Oh, um, yes. Kind of a little bit of a kind of a, a mixtape. Like now, 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 you are you for or against Drake as a like hype song or hype music? Again, I don't. I. It's not like a whole an entire artist for me. It's specific songs. So there, I think there are. I think I've got a, a, a Drake song or two on the playlist. I don't. I can't think of what it is on the, off the top of my head, but I think he's got some some great songs for sure. We've we've had some players on the show, and they are like so against anything Drake when it comes to hype music, and other people like <laughs> die by Drake. It's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> it is, yeah he's last, kind of polarizing. <laughs> last question here for you, Kyle. We've all had plenty of time over the last year and a half or so to spend time in front of our television and binge watch television shows or series or whatever it is. What's the last show or series that you got an opportunity to binge watch? Um, over, over the OTAs, I was here by myself. I watched, uh, and I'm not done with it, but, uh, the last kingdom. It's, okay. uh, uh, yeah. it's on Netflix. It. It's kind of like, it's a little bit like Viking, but it's after like the the Viking show from History Channel. It's later in mm -hmm. history than that. Um, but it's it's England. Um, and again, I'm not done. But it, I I was really enjoying um, what I was seeing. Very nice. I'm I'm I want to say I'm ashamed by how many Netflix series I've gone through during COVID. But I feel like everyone at this point has gone through all of the Netflix and Hulu and yeah. Disney Plus. We're all in the same boat, I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah don't even get jake started i have yet to finish the marvel phase one two and three and i'm way behind oh, on those yes. i know <laughs> you have you have you seen infinity war and Endgame? no no i Ky and everyone Ky if you really want to be upset right now kyler oh no i going through it it came up to the point where dan had to watch the winter soldier it took dan four times just to finish winter soldier 
He would send me text messages of the TV and then, and then watch it. He's like, okay, hey, great. I talked to him later in the day. He's like, so what'd you think of it? I didn't finish it. Like, what are you talking about, dude? How did you not finish it three times and it took you four times to finish the movie? Look, oh, I, it, there's a lot of movies. I just finished Guardians of the Galaxy, so I'm on my way. But yeah, yeah I got there, a long way to go. There are, <laughs> there are, I mean, what, there's like 22 movies or something yeah. in the whole thing. So, I, I mean, it is a lot. And I literally didn't know that all those movies were connected until Jake told me like eight months ago. He's like, did you watch the end of the movies? I already have my tickets for Shang-Chi, so I'm ready to roll for tomorrow, so I'm good. (laughs) All right, well, clearly we need to end this interview so we can go and watch more Marvel movies. Kyler, thank you so much for joining us. Honestly, this has been such a blast, and I can't wait to see you on the field in, what, 10 days now? I mean... How do you, just okay real quick how are you feeling about just the like the season starting like how what are you up to between now and then like how are you going to contain your energy it's about time for sure i mean i'm, I'm yes, sick sir. of practicing against the chargers offense you know i, I want <laughs> to do something different um, hit somebody with a different colored jersey <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> tackle somebody for real sack the quarterback for real all there that you go. can't wait there you go Well, hey, best of luck to you. I hope you guys are lucky charms all season. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you ball on Sundays, all right? Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dick. Hey, best of luck to you and the family. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, all right? Don't be stranger. All right. Whether she prefers a statement piece or everyday subtle elegance, BlueNile.com has fine jewelry options for every mom. Shop high-quality classic diamond earrings, elegant tennis bracelets, or gemstone pendant necklaces. Online shopping is easy with free shipping and returns. Until Mother's Day, listeners can save $50 on purchases of $500 or more. Just go to BlueNile.com and use the code RADIO to save. You know a spot, but not just a spot, the spot. Actually, with the all-new Nissan Frontier, you know a bunch of them. One for hitting the trail. One for catching a wave. One where this happened. Yo, where'd our tent go? Another where the fish get bigger. Every time you tell the story. Some spots, you made your mark. Others, marked you. And one, okay, let's stay away from that one. But the key to these great spots, being able to reach them in the first place. Your spot is out there. Find your frontier in the all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier. With best-in-class standard 310 horsepower, advanced tech, and 281 pound-foot of torque. Comparison based on 2022 Frontier S versus latest in-market Ward small truck segment. Base models compared based on manufacturer's website.